SMT Nation, we back. Two pieces of news from Verizon we're going to cover today in this video. I'll link both articles in the description. Starting with the first story, Verizon moves commercial traffic onto its 5G standalone core. Okay, so this is a pretty big development because this was supposed to happen at some point last year. They were going to be dabbling with the SA core uh, with actual like customers on it and traffic on it and devices connected to it. And we haven't really seen it, and they've been pretty quiet about it. So now that it's kind of happening and things kind of coming together, uh, this is probably pretty monumental for them. All right, so just because this is happening doesn't mean that you are going to be on their SA core. I'm sure there's like certain test beds and beta devices and other things. Obviously, you have to have a device that's capable of connecting to a standalone network. Uh, but let's let's see what Verizon kind of declared here with this announcement. Uh, so the 5G core is built on the Verizon cloud platform, a telco cloud that the carrier built internally based on software-defined networking tech. Verizon runs VCP in its own data centers. Okay, so th this is what all the carriers are doing. Uh, they're working with companies like Microsoft and Amazon to develop cloud-based platforms and software-defined technology network cores to operate this 5G. Now, Verizon, specifically Verizon, we know a little bit more about than the others uh, because Verizon has been working with Samsung as their vendor operator uh, to put up cell sites using their radio gear that are SA-enabled, standalone 5G, right? So the actual operations of the hardware on tower sites has to be standalone 5G ready. Uh, and that's that's been happening. And I actually live in a uh, a Samsung market when it comes to their vendor gear, all right. So the radios and antennas, and these VRAN sites are probably the ones that are actually connected to the standalone core. I can't comment or speculate on the other vendors, for example, Nokia, uh, for example, Ericsson. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I don't want to speculate on their stuff because I can't confirm it. But I'm assuming that all that is in the works. And what we're going to start seeing quite soon is going to be consumers that are connected to voice over NR, right? These are, this is voice calling on real 5G, uh, not just falling back to LTE. And the same could be said about standalone networking with respect to uplink, which in a lot of cases, you guys know, you got the download speeds, you got the upload speeds, you know, your, your throughput. So downloading things like videos and watching videos, all does the download. Uh, you're connected to a 5G ultra wideband signal or regular 5G nationwide, right? That's on 5G, but the uplink often is usually over LTE. Some PCS, AWS, you know, band 2, band 66, band 13, band 5, and all that's over LTE. So that's going to be for these SA operations, it's all going to be 5G. So CBRS is going to go 5G, like all these different things that are going to be happening. And we're waiting for it to happen, okay? And all of this, of course, 5G standalone runs cloud native. It's software defined. All the scaling, all the configuration, all the modifications, the algorithms, the artificial intelligence, the machine learning that goes into making the networking more efficient and making it more pleasurable and making it more dynamic. And you can fine tune certain things. I mean, it's essentially what DISH is doing today. Right, being a software-defined network, that's where Verizon is going, AT&T and T-Mobile as well. So uh, AT&T commented in commercializing their 5G SA core. Uh, they're not doing it until devices are more devices are ready. And I'm sure Verizon has been playing that game too. Right, The carriers have been waiting for people to have 5G standalone capable devices. This would be like the iPhone 12 and newer. Uh, I think the iPhone 12 and newer. It might be the 13 and newer. I know that the this year's phones, all SA 5G ready, probably all of last year's flagship phones as well. I just don't know how far it goes back. I know that like the S20s, those probably don't do it, but the 21 generation probably does. All right, so this is um, a big step in the direction of standalone 5G networking. Uh, before we can really talk about 5G of, you know, its promises being fulfilled and I mean, we have to launch these standalone cores first. Uh, and then, you know, the carriers can start to do network slicing. They can start to do things like all the unique cloud native 
you know, software defined things that they can do, especially when it comes to enterprise, especially when it comes to new 5G use cases, which are on the horizon. And as people and companies and entrepreneurs and developers develop those things, then that's where the stuff comes into play. All right, good stuff. Uh, th- we'll probably hear more about this in the coming months, but very, very soon, right? January 2023 seems like a good time. We shall see. All right, so next story. Verizon wins $1.5 billion contract to update the State Department network. All right, that's a good contract. $1.5 billion seems to be the Verizon way to get these kind of deals here. Verizon reeled in a big fish this week, netting $1.5 billion task order from the U.S. Department State Department to upgrade the network infrastructure at nearly 260 embassy locations across the globe. So Verizon gets the deal. Uh, raises Verizon's 2022 tally of publicly announced government contracts for wireline services to nearly $3 billion. All right, these locations are included in the U.S., Asia, Africa, Middle East, South America. So over the course of the next 10 years, they've got this EIS technology procurement program. They're banking big time here, folks. Uh, says here that Maggie Hallback, Verizon's SVP of public sector, told Fierce the contract represents new business for the operator. She added the task order is also special because while many of our other EIS contracts have global aspects to them, many of them are also very much committed to the continental U.S., Alaska, Hawaii. So that makes this probably pretty unique is that it's such a broad global footprint. This is pretty big, folks. Uh, early in the year, Verizon got a got a trio of contracts, one from the DOD worth almost a billion dollars, a more than 400 million task order from the FBI, and uh, contracts are now um, tallying more than 2.8 billion so far in 2022, and they could be building on this through the rest of the year. Naval contracts, right? Uh, the the Air National Guard, the DOD, Department of Labor. Verizon's winning, folks. And look, we could say all we want about the consumer side and all that's legitimate. I'm not discounting it. But when they continue to bag these kind of contracts, I mean, (laughs) there's got to be some element of them feeling like, hey, we're still winning. So (laughs) it's it's as terrible as it may sound, as terrible as it may look. That's the truth. All right. Comment on these stories. Comment down below. You are the voice of the people, the SMT Nation. Let your voice be heard. Like, share, subscribe for more. Turn on the bell notification icon to never miss an upload. Links in the description for my Twitter, my Gmail for business inquiries, my Patreon page. There's also a join button now if you want to become a member. Get exclusive access and perks not found anywhere else. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Peace.